Hey guys and welcome to the Pixel Extravaganza Part 1. So today I'll be showing you how to root your Pixel on Oreo or Nougat. It uh, doesn't really matter which one you're on as uh, I believe these steps will work for both uh, Nougat and Oreo. So uh, let's get started. Now before I guess we go too deep into all this, um, this may or no, may not void your warranty and also you may have some issues bypassing safety net uh, in the case that Magisk fails. So Magisk, we'll be using that to root our phone instead of SuperSU, um, but you can use SuperSU if you'd like, but I'll be covering the use of Magisk in this. We're going to be unlocking the bootloader, flashing TWRP, and then rooting our pixel here. Now currently this one is on Oreo, and we'll just double check at the system and about phone that we are on the latest build here on 8.0. Again, it doesn't really matter which build you're on, this, this method should work quite well. So uh, right, let's get started. So of course we need to download a few things and that's uh, where we need to head over to our computer. First thing we need to download is the SDK Platform Tools standalone uh, zip file here. Now this just contains the ADB and Fastboot executables that are required for us to connect with our phone. So we need to use this, uh, these platform tools to send commands to our phone. So just click on the one for your operating system here. Uh, for those using Mac or Linux, you will need to, I guess, find out how to use the executables that are provided in those zip files and I'm sure it's quite easy I'll probably have a link to this in the video post down below the first link you'll find there so I'm going to download the one for Windows and next since this is a guide for either the Pixel or Pixel XL when we download TWRP you'll need to search up your model here so I just have the normal Pixel so I'm going to search up Pixel and of course the code name is Sailfish if you have the larger one the XL you want to open up or download the one for Marlin. Once you have your associated TWRP page open, you want to scroll down and click on one of the primary download links. Now after that, you want to download the latest version of the zip and also the latest version of the image. And usually they have matching versions, so make sure you download both of these files. One will be labeled the pixel installer and ends with a zip, and one will be labeled the TWRP fastboot which ends in IMG. So we're going to download those two files. And last but not least, we're going to download the latest version of Magisk Beta. Now, at the point of this video, you'll need to download the latest beta version of Magisk, which is compatible with the pixels due to its AB partition layout. But in the event, say, maybe the beta gets pushed into the stable release, you'll want to download the sta latest stable release. And I'll make a note of that on my website. So you want to download the latest version of Magisk here, the beta one. So you're going to end up with these four files. All in all, you're going to have the platform tools, the two TWRP files, and Magisk. So once you have these downloaded, we're just going to extract the platform tools that we need. So we're going to open up the platform tools folder, and we want to extract the ADB EXE and the two DLLs, and then we're going to extract the fastboot EXE and also the libwin pthread dash one DLL. Drag all those outside, just like that, in the same directory as all our other files. And then we can close that. So you also may notice that we haven't installed our drivers or downloaded the drivers. So this is going to be a separate step, just in case you don't need the drivers and in case you do need the drivers. But I'll be providing a link to that, of course, in the more info. So once you have everything extracted, let's head over back to our pixel so we can get started on doing a couple things that we need to do. First off, you'll need to enable the developer options so we can enable OEM unlock. So tap on the build number down here seven times until the developer options are enabled. You will need to put in your pattern here. You can head back once and head over to the developer options. You want to make sure that OEM unlocking is enabled. You also need to enter your pattern for this and enable OEM unlocking. Down here, you want to disable system updates so that your phone doesn't automatically download updates and install them on the B partition and when you restart your phone it's going to get replaced including TWRP so we don't want that happening uh, do we and our boot image we don't want to kind of unroot our phone just like that uh, you can turn on USB debugging that is optional but we don't need that today so what we're going to do next now is to reboot our phone into download mode so to do this just hold the power button up here and tap on power off now once our phone is powered off all we need to do is hold the power button and volume down buttons at the same time until you get into the bootloader. You should feel it vibrate. Now, once you're in the bootloader, you can now go ahead and plug in our USB Type-C cable 
into the phone. Now here is where we kind of need to split off to see whether our phone needs to install drivers or not, or our computer I should say. So I'm going to head back over to our computer and if I just bring up the device manager, you can do that by right clicking on the start menu, start button on Windows 8 and 8.1 and above. Or you can click on the start menu and then right click on computer and press manage on Windows 7. Or you can just search up device manager. Now you can see I have an Android device here and Android bootloader interface installed here already. But if you don't have it, for example, if I just bring up this virtual machine here, um, for example, I'm just going to plug in our pixel here. Uh, we have no driver found on Windows 7. So that means we'll need to install drivers here. You can download the latest Google USB drivers from their website, which will be down below anyway. And you just click here to download the driver zip file, the latest one, and you'll end up with a file looking just like this. Once you have this file, you can open it up and just extract the USB underscore driver folder outside just like that. And what you want to do is open up Device Manager. So you can right click on Computer and press Manage, and then go over to Device Manager. And from there you'll see this unidentified device labeled Android. It may be labeled something else and it may be under a different uh, subheading. So to install drivers, right click on it and then click on update driver software. And then you want to browse my computer and you want to browse for that USB underscore driver folder which is in our downloads and just here. Click OK. Make sure include subfolders is checked and then click next. You can always trust the software from Google Incorporated and then hit install. And this will install the bootloader drivers on your phone, or on your computer I should say, for use with your phone. So give this a couple minutes or a few seconds and it should successfully update. Now if yours says Li Mobile bootloader interface or Li Mobile Android bootloader interface, that is fine as well, as long as your device is accessible by fastboot. So I'm going to disconnect this now and we're going to head back to our Windows 10 computer. So you can see that our bootloader interface thing is still there and with the executables that we've extracted in that folder we're going to need to use the fastboot one now. So to get started we're going to want to hold shift and right click and then click on open PowerShell window here or if you're on older versions of Windows you can click on open command window here. These steps are exactly the same but it'll just look a little bit different. So what you want to type here, if I just position this right, you want to type in fastboot devices like so, hit enter, and you should see your device um, connected here with a serial number. So we're going to type in our next command which will unlock the bootloader and this will wipe everything from your device so make sure you have a backup of anything you need on there. And now to get started with that we're going to type in fastboot flashing unlock like so, hit enter. And you can see the screen on our phone changed and to unlock the bootloader we can press volume up to select yes and then press the power button to confirm that decision. Now you can see our device, this is bootloader has been unlocked now. This is a screen you're going to see on every boot up and unfortunately you can't remove it and you'll see that padlock as well so that means your device, this is bootloader, is now unlocked. Now we're going to wait for our phone to turn on. Uh, it'll probably go into the recovery and wipe itself in the meantime but um, we're going to wait for that to boot up and when we do we're going to get along with the rooting process now. So once your phone boots up, all you have to do is uh, quickly go through the setup process and you can sign in with all your Google accounts now since your phone shouldn't be wiped again unless you plan on flashing a custom ROM, but we'll discuss that a little bit later. So I'm going to go through the setup process and I'll be back when we can copy over stuff. Okay, so I've just quickly set up the pixel here. Now what you want to do is enable or change the USB mode to transferring files. Now once you do that, um, and you can see your internal storage, you want to copy over a couple things from our Android folder that we had previously. So first up, you want to copy over the TWRP pixel installer. You want to copy that to your phone. And you'll also want to copy the latest version of Magisk over onto your phone as well. So these two zip files need to be on your phone. And once you've done that, we can go back and root this thing now. So we're going to install TWRP and that requires us to go back into the bootloader. So I'm just going to quickly unplug the USB cable and another trick that you can do instead of powering off and waiting, you can tap on restart 
and as soon as the phone screen turns black, you can just hold volume down and that should boot you into the bootloader. Like so. And once your phone is in the bootloader, go ahead and plug in the USB cable. And once your cable is in, we'll go back to our, our prompt here and we'll type in fast boot devices once more. And you can see our phone is back in and connected to the computer properly. So I'm just going to clear the prompt, make it clearer. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to flash or boot TWRP as per the instructions on the TWRP download page. So to do this, we're going to type in fastboot, boot, leave a space in the end, and drag in our TWRP fastboot image, and then hit enter. Now this will kind of send the boot image to our phone, and then from our phone, we, it'll boot the TWRP image temporarily. You need to enter your pattern here to decrypt the data partition so that it can access your internal SD card. And from here, we can either keep read only or swipe to allow modifications. Um, but we're going to swipe to allow modifications here. Then we're going to tap on install, scroll down a bit, and tap on the TWRP pixel installer. And what we want to do here is just to swipe to confirm flash. And you can see this is where TWRP will be installed to both partitions, and this will patch the boot image as well. From here, we're going to go back, back into the reboot menu. So this also sees our current slot. So we can install things to different slots. And also, from here, we're going to reboot into the recovery. We're going to uncheck these two things and we tap Do Not Install. Of course, that is optional. So our phone should reboot back into TWRP without us needing to boot the TWRP image. Now, it's very important to have that zip file handy on your device, just in case you need to modify the boot image in any way. So just put our pattern in again. And you can see TWRP is working just fine. Next up, we're going to install Magisk. What we need to do here is install Magisk, swipe to confirm flash. So once Magisk has finished installing, we're just going to reboot our device, like so, and wait for it to turn on. And then we'll have a look at the, uh, Magisk and see if we can pass safety net, and of course check our root status as well. So you can see our device is booted up now, and we should see the Magisk Manager in our app drawer here. You can see Magisk has been installed and is the supposedly latest, latest version. We can also see that we can adjust super user settings from here, and we can also check out Magisk Hide for hiding root from certain apps, and of course any modules that we want to install as well. So let's go over to settings, and the reason why I can't test out safety net passing is that I'm not connected to the internet. I'll do that shortly after, but we'll just check out root access using a root checker here. You can see we can grant root access and we are rooted on Android 8.0, which is great. So now we're going to check for the safety net bypass. Okay, so I went on the Play Store and downloaded a safety net tester and let's uh, run the test. Now I'm not sure why the one built into Magisk isn't working right now, but I guess that doesn't really matter because, as you can see, this one passes the safety net test, well, as of today. This is all subject to change, so um, hopefully you're not too dependent on this, but it is nice to be able to use Android Pay on a rooted device otherwise. So thanks for watching this first video, guys, and this is how you root your Pixel on Nougat or Oreo. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, happy flashing.